What is up guys? Today we are back with another video on Georgia Tech and this time we are going to be debunking 5 myths at Georgia Tech. I recently came out with another video going over 5 of my favorite traditions at Georgia Tech. People seem to enjoy that video so I'll link it here. Depending on your level of familiarity with Georgia Tech, you may or may not know about these myths, but these are 5 things that I had misconceptions about when I was a freshman that I quickly, or not so quickly, learned were not the case. Let's get started. Alright, so myth number 1, which a lot of you have probably heard about, is the ratio. And by the ratio, I mean the ratio of females to males at Georgia Tech. Now, this myth comes from the fact that Georgia Tech historically has mostly been dominated by males. However, that is not so much the case anymore. I don't have the exact numbers, but it's believed that the ratio is about 60% male to 40% female. So statistically, there definitely are more males than females, hence where the ratio comes from. But on campus, it actually doesn't feel nearly as bad as it might sound like. In my experience freshman year, I thought a lot of my CS classes were going to have barely any girls and be almost all guys. That definitely hasn't been the case, and trust me, there are still plenty of girls in all the technical classes at Georgia Tech, despite what a lot of people think because of that ratio. Alright, so point number two comes from something that I learned about at my freshman orientation, and it was an old saying that they used at Georgia Tech that went something like, look to your left, look to your right, one of you will not be here at graduation. Like the previous point, this really just comes down to historical trends. The reality is that today, the six-year graduation rate is around 85%, which is a far cry from the two-thirds that that saying seems to reference. Now, I don't actually know if the graduation rate really used to be that low, or if that was just an exaggeration, but trust me, if you're going to Georgia Tech anytime soon, the dropout rate will be significantly lower than that. The third myth is one that I'm pretty sure most of you will be familiar with, and that is that there is no work-life balance at Georgia Tech. Now, some people will probably disagree with me and say that this actually isn't a myth, and that there really is no work-life balance at Georgia Tech, but I'm going to disagree with all those people and say that there is, but there's a catch. And the catch is that you have to put in more work to have a work-life balance at Georgia Tech than at other schools, which I realize doesn't really make sense, but I'll explain. Basically, what I mean is that at other schools that maybe aren't as intense, it will be easier for you to have a life because there is less work, thus you're not going to be overwhelmed by your work. At Georgia Tech, as I've mentioned in a million of my other videos, the workload is very intense. So if you actually want to have a life, you're going to have to actively manage your time to make sure that you allocate time for having a life. And I know this might sound a little bit ridiculous, but I'm serious. I've sat down and made schedules to free up these blocks of time that I waste on other things so that I can have more of a life and allocate it to other things I want to do. like making these videos for you guys. And trust me, this balance is different for everyone. There are probably some people who look at my balance and they think that I don't have much of a life. But the truth is, for me, I'm perfectly content with the amount of balance I have. And admittedly, for me, my work-life balance is pretty work-heavy, but that's what works for me. And for you, you just need to figure out what helps you achieve your goals in college academically and what helps you be happy and have the life that you want to have and not be miserable for four, five, or six years in college. The fourth thing I want to talk about isn't exactly a myth, it's more so a misconception that I had my freshman year, and maybe I'm just dumb and I was the only one who's confused about this, but I was confused about it, so you might be confused about it, so I'm going to tell you about it. And that would be the geographic landmark on our campus that is better known as Freshman Hill. Basically, if you're not familiar with campus, there's this big hill that leads up from East Campus towards the center of campus, and this is known as Freshman Hill. The issue is, I lived on West Campus my freshman year, and I barely had to go over to East, so I never walked up this freshman hill, and I was really confused about where freshman hill was, and why it seemed like I was never walking up it. The reality is that if you live on East Campus, you'll probably spend a lot of time walking up freshman hill. But if you live on West Campus, odds are you probably won't have to walk up and down freshman hill all that often. The other thing that was confusing about it is that not only freshmen live on East Campus, so as a sophomore, I lived in North F Housing, which is all the way on East, so I spent a lot more time as a sophomore walking up freshman hill than I actually did as a freshman. I realize that this is kind of a silly point, but I was confused about it as a freshman, so this is for all of you who were also confused about freshman hill. Okay, and now that I have that out of the way, we can move on to my final myth. And yes, this one is actually a myth and not just me being confused. All right, so the last myth I want to talk about isn't necessarily specific to Georgia Tech, but I still think it's applicable because it's a misconception that I came in with my freshman year. And that would be that I thought pretty much everyone at Georgia Tech was getting internships, though in reality that is not actually true. And the intent of this isn't for me to draw from statistics, it's really just for me to talk about my observations from what I've seen after spending three years here. Coming in my freshman year at Georgia Tech, I definitely felt like I was going to be able to get an internship that summer without it being overly difficult. And if you're someone who 
watches my channel fairly regularly, you probably do know that I did land an internship my freshman summer, but what I'm here to tell you is that a lot of people don't. And this also applies for your sophomore summer and for your junior summer. Because the truth is, even at a school like Georgia Tech, it is still hard to land an internship. And yes, having Georgia Tech listed on your resume will give you an advantage when you're trying to get an internship, but the truth is that your school can only take you so far when you're trying to get an internship. And as a result, a lot of people here won't get internships simply because it's really hard, especially depending on the major you're in. And for some people, internships just aren't their primary focus. The main thing you need to take away though is that not everyone is going to be getting internships. So you don't need to worry about if you don't get an internship that you're going to be one of the only ones and everyone else is getting an internship. Trust me, there are going to be plenty of people at Georgia Tech who do get internships and plenty of people at Georgia Tech who don't get internships. All right, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe for new videos every week. That's it. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.